Hey, welcome in, everybody. As you can see, Jeffrey's not here today. Cole Pinkston, Auburn uh, recruiting analyst for Auburn Live on three. I'm here with Alan Head, back in the back. We're gonna uh, we're gonna do the show for you. We're gonna do it without Jeffrey, but I think, as I've said before, maybe lacking a little bit of personality, but definitely gonna be there in the analysis factor. So um, we got some questions from the corner. We're gonna jump right into it. Probably gonna be a little bit of a shorter show for you today, but the questions will be answered. And uh, Alan, could you even guess what? Some of our topics might be today. Oh, I don't know. Maybe a juju question. Maybe what the wide receiver board is looking like. Yeah. Are we are we done losing commitments? You know, just the the variety of things that the uh, the corner truly wants to know before we have our Fourth of July holiday. The things they care about. Well, it it has it has been a little. Uh, Auburn's in a little bit of a dry spell. I think it's fair to say that. Sure. Um. You know, will Fourth of July provide a firework or two? I think so. I, I, we got, you know, we got Hollis Davison that's set to commit on the Fourth of July. I think Auburn's probably in the lead there, and uh, you and Jeffrey would agree. So, other than that, I don't know if anything else will happen that day. But if nothing else, get the ball back rolling, get a little momentum going, get back on track. I, I don't think they're off track by any means. Just, just get a little momentum, some positive public momentum, right? Agreed, it, because regardless of how the staff feels about the situation, and obviously Hugh Freeze feels very good because he's been out, our own very own Justin Hokinson covered this last night, saying that Auburn's going to get a top five class. Well, for him to go on record as saying that with some of your most prominent boosters and, and loyal Auburn fans means that he has some conviction there. But some of probably the corner, your more informed fan base, feels a little bit, though, where we're in a tailspin somewhat. And so – Getting one is, is as important as Hollis Davidson, regardless of ranking, right? He's a three-star, but he's a guy that we think has the potential to be much significantly better than that. And Hollis Davidson, a flex tight end, a guy that could be that potential Rivaldo Fairweather for you in the future. Landing him, landing Jacoby Ward, who's obviously scheduled for his commitment ceremony on the 6th of July. Those would be big. And then I think Blake would be as out there with a uh, – Commitment date, it hasn't been determined just yet, along with Anquan Fagan. So those four are big for Auburn, and seeing those would, you know, kind of create some belief and turn that narrative to be more positive for this uh, for this fan base, and I'm excited to see it. Yeah, at the end of the day, Hollis Davidson was a guy, maybe doesn't get everybody all excited, but this is the, this is a guy that Auburn had committed and wanted committed, did not want to decommit, then got then – got, all this attention from Florida, Florida State, even Georgia came in there and said, look, you know, we would probably take you. Mm -hmm. uh, so, I mean, look, what what more could you ask for there? I, you get that guy back in the class, that's a big get. Right. Regardless of ranking, he's tier one to this stuff, right? He's somebody that they prioritized early on that they wanted. And to me, if it's, you know, typically speaking, because of the way the portal is now, you want to take guys that aren't just good, but that have pro upside. And in my opinion, Hollis Davidson, with his size, his frame, his speed, athleticism, he has pro upside. So regardless, again, of the ranking, prioritization by this staff, NFL upside, it's a plus-plus for me. For sure. All right, uh, Zach, we'll get into some questions here. We'll get those rolling. Question number one from Eric132. What's the feel around Devin Williams? Do y'all think he flips? Devin Williams, four-star corner, committed to Auburn from Buford High School in Georgia. I think he's been committed since February. Is that right? February 26th? That's correct. The reason I know that is because I said there, <laughs> there will be multiple commitments in March. And then Devin Williams, one of the guys I was counting on, does it in February. I'm like, come on, man. Help me out here. Yep. Uh Anyway, what, what do you think, Alan? What, what's the feel around him? Do you think he flips? Is, is there flip talk about Devin Williams? Yeah. So he visited Texas, had a very good visit out there, seemed to enjoy things. And the honest answer is I don't know. I think there's the potential that he could, contingent on how hard Texas were to press there. But I think Auburn's very interested in keeping Devin Williams in the class. I think this is somebody that Wes McGriff identified early as somebody that he wanted and somebody he thought he could build around as far as his defensive secondary recruiting was concerned. And so I think that Auburn will do what it needs to do to keep, you know, Devin Williams in the class. Now, 
how does Devin Williams feel? I don't know because no, I don't believe anybody's talked to him since his visit to Texas. So we'll just have to wait and see. But at this point, publicly, he hasn't stated anything that would make me think that he's going to decommit anytime soon. But it is recruiting. Things are fluid. And so I'll be interested to hear your thoughts here, Cole. Yes, yeah, so I have actually talked to a couple sources on the Texas side of this recruitment. At one time, they thought there was a very good chance that they could flip him. They thought this was one of those deals where they thought, how hard is Auburn going to push to hold on to him? Right. You know, is the door open for us, maybe monetarily, NIL-wise, to make a push and get him in our class at Texas? And I think that was a thought for a while. He makes his official visit there. Ever since then, it's cooled a little bit on the Texas side. So I think right now Auburn's probably in the best position to hold on to him. Right. Um, I would say that Texas made a good push at one point and probably could if they want to. Right now I'm not feeling that too much. Here's what's in, I don't think anybody's talked about this with Devin Williams. If you go and watch his film, he is a corner for Auburn. But I'm almost more impressed with his offensive film. Mm-hmm. wide receiver film and Devin's not a big guy in this in today's college football do you do you almost look at a smaller guy and go I wonder if he could work on offense it's almost like this year's Malcolm Simmons where Malcolm Simmons is a receiver all the way but now you have a Tyler Scott injury you know you're already pretty thin in the secondary do they maybe give a look at Malcolm Simmons he could that's all I'm saying he definitely sure could play on side. I think Devin Williams is one of those guys that could play on either side you take him because his athleticism is, is is elite. His size isn't elite, and that might be the knock on him. But his athleticism is up there. So uh, does Auburn reevaluate? Does Auburn look at that and go, well, his value is pretty high for us because he could fit in a number of places? Sure. Maybe. Uh, it's possible. But right now, I, I think the Texas side has cooled just a little bit. Does he decommit, that, kind of like Hollis Davidson, open things up, see what happens? Maybe. Uh, but right now, I think he's – Firmly committed. I would agree on that. All right. Question number two. War Eagle 07. Uh, is Big Cat date when we can expect a decision on Juju Lewis? Do you expect the recruits who have committed elsewhere to still show up? Melendez, Isaiah Gibson, etc. Hmm. I, I mean, we don't know a date. Okay. No. I don't know if they have a date locked in or anything of that nature. Um, when I talked to Julian Lewis face to face in Nashville a couple of weeks ago, he just told me, "Look, you know, I'm gonna have a final decision before uh, football season." Right. I saw what a lot of guys say. A lot of guys now they look at the summer as this is it. I'm going into my senior football season. I will be committed somewhere, and I don't want to have to worry about it during my senior football season. In Lewis's case, his junior football season, senior football season. Right, right. Um, so he will do it before then. I, I really believe that. So you're looking at the end of July. If he shows up at Big Cat Weekend, which we talked about this on the Colin show, I'm leaning toward him maybe being there. That's going to be interesting, right? Very interesting. Now, a guy the caliber of Juju Lewis, I tend to believe he's going to have his own ceremony, so I don't think he's going to do it at Big Cat. He could. He very well could. But most of those guys like to control the narrative. They like to have their own individual moment. And I think that Juju's probably of the mind he doesn't want to take away from Big Cat if he were to do something for Auburn there. So – and – the added advantage would be um, obviously him doing it beforehand. So if he does attend, he's a recruiter for you during that event. Right. All that being said, you're right, Cole. There is no date. And if they, if Auburn has a date or Juju Lewis's camp uh, camp has a date, it hasn't been made known to me just yet. And I have asked all the people that I know to ask to kind of push that information. What I do feel comfortable saying is, is that I do think that at the front end of this month, that the Lewis camp is very much in decision-making mode, that they are evaluating different things and they're speaking to different teams. And I feel like within the next week or so, we're going to have a much better read on where we stand with Juju Lewis, what our chances are. And if it's not going to be him, I think you'll start to kind of hear more about pivot targets. That's what I believe to be the case, but I'm with you wholeheartedly. I do think that, 
a decision is definitely coming before the season. When that exactly is, it's TBD. And I would think anywhere from the back end of July to probably about mid-August is probably the time frame that you're looking at to get that done out of the way and then for the other teams involved to kind of pivot and turn to whoever they're going to focus their attention on to be the quarterback in their class. Yeah, I agree. Um, I mean, it could go into August, I guess, but I, I don't see that happening. I, I'm with you. I mean, they've they took their what their last official visit to Colorado two weeks ago now, or almost two weeks ago. Yeah. Yeah. So they're far enough removed from one visit to be off the high, and now it's realistically okay. Let's start to kind of weigh the pros and cons of each and see where we stand. And then there, it, you talked about it, and I'm not going to get into everything. But quarterback recruitments are a massive deal. There are a lot of different factors that go into that. It's not just NIL. It's not just playing time. It's not just the relationship with the head coach. It's all those things and then some added layers into that, right? Yeah. So these are not easy decisions to make, and I think that Juju's camp is going to do their due diligence, and I think Auburn is obviously going to continue to do their due diligence working with him uh, as well as probably identifying what their board is going to look like beyond him should it not be Juju Lewis. Right. And then War Eagle 07 also wants to know, do we expect recruits who are committed elsewhere to still show up at Big Cat? Um, here's the thing about Big Cat Weekend. We're going to have a list. Other places are going to have lists. We're all going to have similar names on there. Um, you, you really don't know until the weekend of the day of on yep. some of these big guys. Like, Caleb Cunningham, for example. Now, Caleb Cunningham's told people he's going to Ole Miss, he's going to Alabama, he's going to Auburn on that weekend. Good for him. He, he I'm not saying he knows how to play it because I think he really, like you said, I don't think he's actually sat down and thought, oh, those are all on the same day. No. I don't think he's thought that far, honestly. Maybe he has, and I, and we don't know that. But it's going to be interesting to see who, who shows up that day. We, we, I mean, I've covered two big cats now. Both times, even before Freeze and his staff were at Auburn, there were guys that you were just not even – just comes out of left field. It happens. It's going to happen this year. Uh, yeah, I expect – I wouldn't be surprised if Elijah Melendez is there. I know he sort of reaffirmed his commitment with Miami, but wouldn't shock me. Auburn continues to pursue him. Um, Daryl Johnson, who's recruited to Alabama. Yes. That's all you can easily see. Um, Derek Smith, who's committed to Alabama, you could see that guy there. Uh, I think Auburn's pushing to get its top targets there, and those are Auburn's top targets, no matter where they're committed. And they're telling them, look, you're going to be surrounded by big cats everywhere. Everybody here is, is important. Everybody here is a big deal. That's why it's important to come to Big Cat Weekend. Agreed. And always that way. So, I think you will um, you'll see some surprises there. You'll see some guys we don't have listed. Some guys that we do have listed won't show up. And that's just the way it goes every year. So, question three: Tigers Unlimited. If we were to miss on Babalola, Andrew Babalola, do we turn our efforts towards another elite tackle prospect? Any names? Hmm. Oh well, you have one. Actually, you have two. Right now, committed in uh, Tavares Dice, Broderick Scholl. Yes, pretty elite. Both of those guys. Uh, I don't know of another name right now. That doesn't mean there won't be. I mean, do you know of any other names at the moment? No, I mean, obviously, they're the names that we talked about very early on. The Josh Petties. Um, a handful of other guys, but I don't think Auburn's necessarily in that group with them. Now, you've got the young man who's trying to make a decision between us and Penn State uh, and Georgia as well. So, obviously, he's a name to monitor. Give me just a second and I'll pull that. Oh, yeah. Malachi Goodman. Yes, Malachi Goodman is the other name to pay attention to other than Andrew Babalola. Those are the two to really watch. But if you go 0 for 2 on both of those, I think you have four offensive linemen that you feel really good about in this class. And I'm counting Jacoby Ward. I think he lands in Auburn's class on July the 6th. And you really love those guys. Probably you would just leverage the portal. You would continue to stay on the Babalolas, 
uh, and the Petties, a handful of other guys, and see if you could flip them down the stretch. But I don't know unless Auburn ID'd somebody in the season where they would really kind of start to push in a different direction. I think they would just hold those spots for the portal and probably try to pursue it there to create a little bit more layered depth. But yeah. they don't want to dilute this class in any way. I think they feel like this is a, a group of guys, you know, some of them a little bit underrated, a Jacoby Ward that's kind of seen like Ben Grubbs, just that road grader guy that can honestly – um, be a force for you on the interior sooner rather than later. You know, uh, some swing pieces there. Broderick Scholl, who they're very high on as a right tackle. You just talked about Dice. I think he is highly underrated. I do. And I think he's only going to continue to go up as recruiting services see more of him this year. So, no, I I just – I don't see them expanding the board at this time. I think they'll stay on the guys that they may have missed on, see if they can flip them down the stretch, and then they'll go into the transfer portal. That will be the play for me. Um, if I were Auburn, and I think that's how they'll do it, they'll, they'll play it. Well, go back to Carday Smith. If if Auburn wanted to hold on to Carday Smith, I believe that Auburn would have held on to Carday Smith. Yes. I, I truly believe that based on who I've talked to, based on my sources. I think your sources say the exact same thing, Alan, Jeffries as well. Yeah. So I feel pretty good about that. So if that's the case, and Auburn does not land Andrew Babalola. I, I think it's okay where you're at right now. You add a guy like Jacoby Ward, your class still looks pretty good for the offensive line. You may just have to do more in the portal, like you said. But good news, I think, in this recruitment is that you are in a position where you're very happy with Tavares Dice. You're very happy with Broderick Scholl. Do whatever you got to do to get Babalola. I and agree. That's why I don't really – I guess I've gone against the grain a little bit when it comes to the national perspective on Andrew Babalola. Auburn doesn't get talked about as much as maybe I think they should. I'm not necessarily saying Auburn wins this out. I'm just saying I think Auburn's in it more than they're getting credit right now. I think Auburn's got a, a fair shot in this recruitment. I agree. And, again – it wouldn't be the first time that the national media – I mean, we just saw it last night, right? Tavion Wallace was predicted by most national media to Florida State. And where did he pick? He Arkansas. picked Arkansas. So surprises still happen. Even as good as the Steve Wiltfongs and the Chad Simmons and multiple other guys – and look, they are good. They are the elite of the elite as far as getting intel is concerned. And I don't think anybody would take issue with me saying that. But it still doesn't mean that there aren't surprises in the recruiting game. There are every year. NIL makes it even more impossible, in my opinion, to make an accurate prediction sometimes on these national on these national guys. And I'll be honest with you, I don't think NIL is a factor for Andrew Babalola. I honestly don't. I think there are other things that he prioritizes significantly more. So I'm with you. I think Auburn is very much in this. Michigan is very much in this. Stanford is very much in this. And where I would have said I think it's Auburn, Michigan a week ago, I think it's a three-way battle all the way around. All three teams are still very much on it, or still very much in it, and we'll just see how it all shakes out at the very end. For sure. Um, all right, question four, Trooper Taylor's Towel, one of my favorite usernames, by the way. What is the linebacker board looking like with the Tyler Lockhart decommitment and Melendez seemingly locked in with Miami? Well, we just named uh, Daryl Johnson. as He's committed to Alabama, but – he is a guy that Auburn, DJ Durkin in particular, really, really likes. Um, Melendez, again, seemingly locked in with Miami. I, I don't know. I'm not really ready to just call that one yet. I want to see no. how that plays out. He, he could very well end up at Big Cat and this thing gets rolling again. Um, am I missing somebody, Alan? Is there another linebacker target out there? No, obviously, J.J. Falk is considered a linebacker for this staff, so he's somebody that they're paying attention to. Uh, you have the young man who came to Auburn and camped that's a Auburn legacy that's also on the board somewhat. Right. His name escapes me at the moment. Yeah. I'm trying to pull up Jeffrey's hot board right now. No, Anderson, Logan Anderson. Yes, Logan Anderson is also a name to, 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 to monitor, right, because – I think Auburn will just wants to see more from the young man. He's predominantly played running back to this point, doesn't have a lot of film playing on the defensive side of the ball. So what do you see there from his senior year? Is he a guy that, you know, similar to Caleb Harris at Thompson this past year, obviously as the season went on, they realized, hey, this is a kid that 
he's really better than we thought he was moving into this season. We liked him before. We like him even more now. Does Logan Anderson become one of those guys, and he goes from a guy that you're just keeping warm to a guy that you're pressing for to get him into the class? So I think that possibility exists with him. And then you have the versatility of a guy like Eric Winters that could play linebacker, could play safety, could play star, could play a litany of different places. So right. I think that's probably your linebacker board at the moment. Uh, I'll give you two more. Okay. <clears throat> Don't forget about Anthony Crua. No. I think, I think he's still out there. He's committed to North Carolina. But, you know, I think people forgot about him and sort of moved on from him in their mind because they were like, well, Tyler Lockhart's in. So he's probably a little further. Well, Tyler Lockhart's, he was always going to be hard to hold on to, if we're being honest. Yes. So Anthony Crew is still on the board. And then what about Christian Jones from Nebraska? Yes. Now that's one for sure. Pay attention to Christian Jones. He's probably going to be hard to pull out of the state of Nebraska. Matt Rule has done a really good job of, of keeping in-state prospects to this point, even though they just let an in-state tight end out of state to Florida State the other night. So that was big uh, to me because it let me know that the state might still be open, right? That he hasn't put, you know what I mean, a, a complete round turn on that state just yet. So Christian Jones is one I'm going to pay attention to. Obviously, DJ Durkin built a relationship with him when he was at Texas A&M. That relationship has continued on here at Auburn, and so we'll just kind of see. But he's a kid I didn't get the sense was going to make a decision anytime soon. He's one that's probably going to make an evaluation and do something in the season. And so does he come back to Big Cat? Because if you get him back for Big Cat weekend, that to me is a little bit of a head turner. Now, he he told me on his official visit that he was planning to get back if it were possible. He wanted to get back. I remember his quote. It, it stood out to me. He said um, – I asked him, how did this come about? How did this official visit? I said, we hadn't heard that much about you, if I'm being honest. Sure. Which makes sense because he's from Nebraska. He said, well, I'm a big DJ Durkin fan. He's from Youngstown. I, my, my dad's from – my, or excuse me, my coach is from Youngstown. He said, and those guys know what it's about. And he said, as long as Coach Durkin is at Auburn, I will be listening to Auburn. And he said he'd probably come back for Big Cat. So mm. – don't forget about him. He's interesting. I, I don't know where he sits on the board. I think he's probably below Daryl Johnson, below Tyler Lockhart. I, I do think Auburn continues to recruit Lockhart, but I think they like him. I, de I definitely know DJ Durkin does, so he's interesting for sure. Yep, and uh, I, I'll give you ahead. one more, Jaden Pilati, which I don't oh. think we mentioned, but – that one he hasn't visited or officially visited yet. He's been scheduled a couple different times, and then neither time it did, did it take. It seems as though Tennessee is trending for him at the moment, and so we'll kind of see if Auburn continues to stay in the game with him. But I do know that Auburn has him rated pretty highly on their board, so a name to still consider for sure. Definitely. Question five, E31, with Tyler Scott news, do you think the coaching staff goes to the portal or sticks with – what we have due to it being late. I'll tell you what, uh, I could have sworn the portal was over and done with. And then, out of nowhere, Colorado former Alabama corner Jaquez Robinson mm -hmm. signed with Auburn. And I, I'll just be honest with you, we weren't expecting that. Me, Jeffrey, nobody. Now, I think a long time ago, I think maybe even in the first portal window whenever he hit the portal we, we discussed it yeah maybe on a show maybe behind the scenes i can't remember but we definitely talked about him going oh that makes sense if, if that might make sense right that was in the group text where we were kind of okay we're looking at our cornerback board because we're evaluating right like it, we're trying to establish who do we think are legitimate targets and that was one that made sense to both you i and jeffrey like okay this is a kid to pay attention to. And then you just really didn't hear anything from that point moving forward. And my intel on the situation was that the young man needed to graduate from Colorado to be eligible to transfer to Auburn. Yeah. So I think the combination of obviously that injury, so Auburn having, having an, a bigger need now and him getting academically eligible made that possible. Right. Well, and that's the point. I, nobody was expecting that. Nope. Nobody was expecting Sam Jackson when he signed with Auburn. Sometimes they're just doing things in the portal that are impossible to track, impossible to know about. I think there's a chance they're going to just look and go, is there anybody that we think might can just help us out? 
numbers wise? Is there anybody that would take that opportunity to come here? So I'd keep your eyes open for it. I don't know for sure if that's going to happen, but maybe it's it's a possibility. We'll put it that way. All right, question six, War Eagle of 95. Current percentage updates on Juju with the seeming good rumblings recently. I think I made the statement, Alan, on a show that I was at 40%, and that's it. I'm not changing. I'm done. That's, that's right. You're back to changing it again, aren't you, Cole? Put me at 45. Okay. I think 45 is fair. I think I've been at 50% versus the field. I'm going to stay at 50% because I still, to this point, don't know who the leader is in this recruitment. I don't either. You know what I mean? I do not know who the leader is in this recruitment. And I think that all three teams that are highly being considered, and that is Auburn, USC, and Colorado, all have the potential to land Juju, period. I know that Auburn fans won't don't want to hear that. They they think that some, there's a deal close to being made, or the ones on our board tend to believe that there is a deal close to being made. Um, and maybe you're more informed than me. But as of right now – They think the <laughs> podcast is late because of something – Having to do with Julian Lewis, I mean, right? I'm it, just gonna it, tell you, it ain't. Nope. <laughs> no, it, it has nothing to do with Julian Lewis and everything to do with the fact that we needed to take care of Zach in the back last night. So let's let's lay that rumor to rest. But <laughs> yeah, right now it's I got Auburn at 50 50 shot to land Julian Lewis. I think that's where we stand as of today. Uh, and hopefully I'll have some more information next week and I can change that percentage to give a better read to the room as far as what the expectation is. I mean, look, I wouldn't argue with that. I wouldn't argue with 55, Auburn. No. I just can't go there personally. No, I'm with you. There's too much unknown right now to say, yep, for sure, Auburn's the favorite. Because to me, the second that I step off the ledge and say 55, I'm saying Auburn's the leader in this recruitment, and I'm not there just yet, I think. I think you're very much in it. I think there's the chance, like I said, that it's you and another team that he's making a decision between, but I don't know that either. I will tell you this. Here's one of the reasons why my my, my confidence is rising a little bit as of late. I think that Auburn is willing to do what it takes with him. I could not agree with you more. I think that we've hit that point, right? Yeah, I, I think Auburn's willing to do what it takes. I don't think they're going to say, oh, well, that's – that's not going to happen, to an extent at least. I don't think they'll do something crazy and outlandish to get him, but I don't think that they're shying away from, I guess you would say, big numbers or or whatever the case may be, NIL mm -hmm. guys, all of that. I think they're in. I think they're in it to win it for that. Uh, you know, that's given me more confidence lately. And I think they Auburn probably looks at it and goes, just the bolster he could be for our recruiting class. The juice, right? Like yeah. the juice that he brings, what does that do? And if you're Hugh Freeze and you're trying to get a top five class, Julian Lewis gives you an opportunity to do that. And so from that standpoint alone, I do believe, Cole, that you're right. They're in a position right now where they're they're ready to do whatever it takes to get Julian Lewis in an Auburn uniform this time next year. Before we go to the next question, I did want to ask you, you know, Freeze said that. He came out and said, look, I, I don't remember exactly how he worded it, but close to a top five class, I think is what he said. Yeah. And he doesn't know where they're ranked right now. He's not paying attention to it. He just thinks they'll end up there. Sure. Why, what do you think gives him that confidence? What is it he's seeing? What exactly is he counting on? What is it? I, I, I've thought about this a little bit. Sure, and I think it's because he knows at the end of the day that he's going to do what it's necessary to take some of these top guys that are on their board. They're going to get it done, just like they did last year. I think he feels confident in the fact between NIL, his ability to recruit, the pitch, the staff, the culture that they're building, the success they're going to have on the field. All of that is going to be layered into a recruiting wave that Hugh Freeze is going to ride to try to get this top five class. And so when you have a willingness to do what it takes to win, to be successful, to, you know, get the targets that you want in recruiting, I think that's, you know, that gives confidence to people like you and I that follow this on a daily basis, you know, that are trying to get a read on what it is that they're going to be capable of right now. 
And so to see him make a statement like that gives me a little bit of confidence in that, okay, some of these guys that we may have felt like could be trending elsewhere. All right. Just take it for what it is in the moment. Don't think too much about it and realize that Auburn's also going to make an additional push as well for these same players. Right. I agree. Question number seven, Austin Faison. Do y'all see a case where we don't take a high school receiver and just go with the portal to fill the need since the board isn't looking that promising for us? No. I'm, I'm with you on that. And I think it would be honestly hard with what you took in the high school class last year. Portal guys are looking to play, right? They're not looking to come in here and ride the bench. Yeah. So for that reason alone, I think it's going to be tough to bring in a bunch of portal players. I think Auburn will take one to two from high school in this class. I do. Who that's going to be just yet, I don't exactly know because I think, and you and I talked about this before the show, what happens with the quarterback board is probably what's going to drive what's going to be capable of with the wide receiver recruiting board. So, well, Totally pivotal. Whatever happens, you're right. If Auburn has trouble getting the quarterback in the class, if Auburn misses on Julian Lewis, then we can talk, Austin. Uh, but I, as of right now, I do think Auburn's going to get a quarterback in the class. I whether it's Julian Lewis, KJ Lacey, those are the two obvious ones right now. Um, you know, we think something – we think there will be a conclusion to Julian Lewis at some point, and then we'll have a better idea about receiver. Because once you get a quarterback in like that, or, or even KJ Lacey, you, you're going to have some success with receiver recruiting. And, and they're already in on top guys. It's not like you're late to the party. You're already in. So – there will be names that probably pop up that you're not expecting. Again, it's, you know, it's July. We, we still got a ways to go. There are so many things last July you can look back and go, well, I didn't see that coming. That wasn't happening in July. So just hang in there. Hang in there. We we, we got a ways to go on the receiver board. I, like I said, I don't think we can figure that out until quarterback is figured out. Coach Rob, how does the staff balance continuing to recruit a kid that commits elsewhere with having to fill their own spots so they aren't left without those positions filled. So recruiting a kid that commits elsewhere with having to fill their own spots so they aren't left with those positions filled. I mean, at the end of the day, they'll make the numbers work, right? And that and that what Jeffrey says? The numbers yeah. always the numbers always work out. Amazing how that always happens. The numbers always work out, right? Yeah, so if you have that means if you have somebody committed, and you have somebody else that wants in, and there's no spots, a spot will become available. Yes, and that's probably means a decommitment will happen or a flip. Would be my guess. Yeah, that, pretty simple there. Uh, question nine: T. Keat. T. Keat. There you go. You had to get a little T. Keat. Okay. In an ideal world, we we don't live in an ideal world to keep in college football in an ideal world how many or what percentage of true freshmen would Auburn prefer to play as opposed to redshirt who I think you would like to play them all am I wrong on that no I I mean I think all of them are going to play um how many of them will only play in the four games I think that's going to be determined about the progress that they make between now and the end of fall camp, right? Like how do you feel about their ability to contribute in your two deep and are they some of your better players? I think all these guys are going to get snaps on special teams in your first couple games just to see what you're capable of. Is the stage too big for you when you step into Jordan Hare? You know, what's it like on game day? Are you a kid that's in practice? You know, you play one way and then when the game lights come on, you play a little bit different. So and that means both ways, right? Like you could be a you could be a fantastic practice player and then you get into the game and it's not not quite the same. Your game speed's not there. Or a kid that just, you know, for whatever reason in practice it doesn't take. And hey man, when the lights come on, they know how to play. So sure. they'll all play in the first four or in in four games at least. Uh I would suspect that probably six to seven of that class are gonna are not gonna redshirt, and then the remainder will. I mean, I think probably your line of scrimmage positions are the ones that are most at jeopardy of being redshirted just because of the nature of the position. I think it's really difficult to come in from high school like Malik Blockton, 
uh, a kid that's still developing somewhat and to go into a man's league and play on the line of scrimmage. And he's a big kid. I mean, he's 280 plus pounds, but going against what he went against in high school at Pike road by comparison to what he's going to see in the sec, it's just, it's a different game, man. Um, yeah. And as Rodney Garner once said, you know, you can dominate when you're going up against these kids that are 250 pounds in high school. But when you get a guy that's 300 pounds, that's athletic, that's leaning on you, <laughs> yeah, it's a different deal. So line of scrimmage players, almost I think all of them will redshirt with the exception of maybe one of the edges and Amaris Williams. I think Amaris Williams is going to play. I think yeah. he's the one line of, line of scrimmage player you can feel good about playing this year. The wide receivers, I think you're going to feel good about a couple of those playing this year. <clears throat> Um, and then defensive back, I think Caleb Harris is going to get some significant snaps this year. I honestly do. I do too. I think he's going to get more than we thought. Yes. And, and even now more so because of Tyler Scott. Um, obviously, so to answer your question again, it, it, for, for 2024, for this upcoming season, you want to play as many as possible because what you probably did in recruiting was told them, look, you come here, you play early because we yes. got to be right now. Now, as it goes along, the ideal world, as you so poignantly said, T. Keat, uh, you want to almost redshirt as many as possible. Of course, that's never going to happen in today's college football. It doesn't work that way anymore. No. But in an ideal world, you redshirt as many as possible. You keep on stacking that layer depth. Some schools maybe can do that. I think, I think Georgia – Alabama, Ohio State, I think they're in a position where they can do that a lot more than others. Sure. And that's your goal. I mean, like we talk about all the time, that's that's the that's the level of roster depth that you're trying to get to. And it's boy, it's, it's difficult. Even those schools, the ones I just named, who have good rosters are struggling to get there. So it's an it's an understandable question. I, I get where you're coming from. It's hard, hard to hit that that number and that depth. All right, question 10. H. Wilson. What is your Mount Rushmore of recruiting gems in the past 20 years for Auburn? Basically, a three-star that outperformed their ranking while at Auburn. Man, I love that question. Mount Rushmore. So, okay. Sure. Uh, Roger McCreary's got to be on there for sure. Great pick. That's great uh, because pick. to go from low three-star to second-round draft pick, that's a pretty big jump. Let me think about this. Maybe – Maybe a Deshaun Davis or Zacoby. Well, Zacoby was a four star. Zacoby was a four. It was a four. Deshaun wasn't. Deshaun was a three. Deshaun. Well, I mean, you're talking about a gym. Deshaun Davis got hurt, and people didn't even recruit him anymore. Auburn kept him and right. said, "We we trust that you're going to be the player you were, that you're the player we first evaluated." And he was. <laughs> Maybe better. Agreed. Uh, D Ford has got to be on your list. Three star mm -hmm. guy. First round draft pick. Um, I think Jark West Hunter is in contention. Three star guy that has sure. outperformed outperformed his ranking. Well, Nick Fairley. Oh yeah, three star out of JUCO. Yes. And really, the crazy thing about Nick Fairley is the first year that he was he was at Auburn for two years. His first year, I guess, twenty eleven, mm -hmm. twenty twelve. No, he was on, excuse me, 2009. He was on 2010 team. He wasn't dominant. He was good. He had flashes. He just became another person that next season. And he was a three star that I remember seeing on the list going, okay, they got another D lineman. Good, you know, good depth. <laughs> no, that guy ended up being pretty good. I'm going to give you one on the current roster that I think will be. Uh, and I think those four, to me, probably the ones we just talked about, obviously Nick Fairley, D. Ford, uh, Roger McCreary, Jarquez Hunter, If because Mount Rushmore is four guys, right? So if that's if we're talking about Mount Rushmore, that's your four. I, one that could be – watch the name Connor Liu. I think he could be on that list. I honestly do. I, I thought he was undervalued as a three-star – he could go down as a four-year starter at Auburn uh, and all the SEC player. I agree with that. How about for this class coming in, I'll go with Caleb Harris. Oh, yeah. 
Um, I would have said Bryce came, but Bryce got his bump to four stars, so that won't happen. You did. Uh, it's got to be Caleb Harris. Of the three stars that they took in that class, it's got to be Caleb. I mean, I just – that kid is a football player, man. If there ever was one, he is a playmaker. He's a football player. He's a kid that just – as my dad used to say, he's a glass eater, right? You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. I, I'll tell you what, of, of all the games that I went to uh, on Friday nights last football season, you know who I would say the two best football players I saw. I mean, football IQ, they're athletic, they're all around the football, they're always making plays, and I'm talking pivotal plays, game changing sure. plays. They're on the same team. Caleb Harris and Quan Fagans. Yep. Those were the two. I, I don't know. Did Thompson win at all? I can't remember. I don't know how they ever lost with those two. Those guys were incredible. No, they lost to Central Phoenix City, didn't they? Yeah, I think so. Either way. I mean, those two guys, they held the back end of their defense. They they come up the linebacker depth. It didn't matter. You can do whatever you, you need them to do, and they're just fantastic. Oh, Zach in the back, what a pick. Chris Davis. Yeah, Chris Davis definitely would be in contention. Maybe put Chris Davis on there and take Jarquez off. I don't know, because if Jarquez has the year I think he's going to have this year, he's going to be drafted pretty highly. I agree. Jarquez is a great one. Um. Uh, all right, Alan, that's our questions today. Do you have any how about you? Yeah, to the whole corner. Happy 4th of July, guys. Honestly, uh, this is one. This is a, a special time of the year for me, obviously, given the nature of my profession. But I hope each of you have a very happy 4th of July. I've truly enjoyed it, even when the rough spots, when the <laughs> when it gets a little turbulent on the board, guys are get a little salty with one another. It's all in good fun. It's all family. Just appreciate each of you guys, and I hope everybody has a very safe, happy 4th of July. All right. The corner. There got you it. go. Uh, all right, I've got a few. Uh, let me start with Matt Z. McKinnell. Oh, yes. Those ad reads the other night. I, first of all, Alan and I greatly appreciate you for not making us do it. Um, second of all, we probably need to do an ad read, right? Yeah, I think that's a great transition, Cole. Let's go ahead because let's talk about OTV. Let's talk about OTV. Um, so if the corner, if you guys are, you know, maybe not in the greatest mood about the way things are going right now, and you want to make a real difference for student athletes at Auburn, join on to Victory Collective. $17 a month, you can support Auburn Athletics. Enjoy awesome perks, monthly giveaways, VIP events, behind-the-scenes content, cash back on your favorite brands. You get exclusive savings on On to Victory gear. You got to head over to onvictory.co. That's .co, not .com, .co. Join today, support Auburn athletes, and get in on the amazing benefits. There you go. I don't know if I did it as good as Zach. I, well, it, it's hard to do. Zach and Jeffrey. There, there are ad read specialists, Cole. We're only here for content, but that's right. Let's, let's plug OTV again in the fact that guys truly they do uh, great work over there at that side, and particularly as it pertains to some of the free giveaways that they give you guys. They truly do give you a wonderful opportunity. And if you're interested, and, and I'm not telling anybody that they need to do this, but if you're interested in contributing and helping in a way that is meaningful, that seventeen dollars goes further than you ever would imagine. So. If you get a lot of guys that are a lot of guys and gals that are interested in providing that, I think it, um, I think it's worth your, I think it's worth your investment, and I think Auburn would appreciate it as well. Absolutely. So uh, Zach McKinnon gets my gets one of my how batches this week for that. Um, TC Tuggers oh. has <laughs> he's had me going a couple times, man. He's pretty funny. He's really started. He's really started popping up more recently. <laughs> and you know what? I love. I love Don. Don. I love you. And I know you're probably getting tired of the jokes about Twin Peaks, but it does make me laugh a little bit. I'm going to be honest with you. Uh, <laughs> I don't remember what something happened. I think maybe Jeffrey put in his prediction for Hollis Davidson, and he said, "Rally the Twin Peaks girls, get the beers on ice." Late in the night. <laughs> So that made me laugh. Um, baked ram, baked ram. Is That's a good one. Great, 
great poster. I'm having to keep a log here because Jeffrey's not here. Um, and then to my guy, Big Dave 55, we uh, we went a little deep sea fishing trip this past weekend. And uh, he's also my consultant for those that don't know. I always tag him when I have these, you know, very, very uh, big thoughts on Auburn football. And because uh, we're usually talking about it, and that's what gets me thinking about it. So, Big Dave, 55, you get one as well. And uh, that'll do it, guys. Ten questions. We got them knocked out. Alan, Zach in the back, I think we did pretty good. Uh, talked about Julian Lewis. I know that's why everybody was here. So, definitely got that in. And we will be back for the Colin show on Sunday night. I don't know if Jeffrey's going to be back. I'm not sure. Right. It's, t- it's, it's TBD, guys. For those that don't know, Jeffrey is has left the country. Uh, he's not on a beach with Harson in Mexico, but he is north of the border in Canada. So make sure that you guys uh, send him a how about you for the old 4th of July. And hopefully we'll see you guys all on Sunday. Yes, sir. Have a good 4th of July. Make sure you sign up with us at Auburn Live for $1 for one month. And then, uh, you know, I think you'll want to stay with us. So definitely check us out for Allen Head, for Zach in the back, and for Jeffrey Lee. I'm going to steal his line. Stay out of that left lane. See ya.